With us now on the set of Live It Up is Richie Kanata. Welcome, how are you? I'm doing great, how about yourself? Good, when you have a reputation and your name's Richie Kanata, you don't need much more introduction. <laughs> um, but you are a master saxophonist. Um, let's talk about your personal journey in music first. Well, it's uh, my personal journey is uh, the God-given talent that I had at four years old, and I pursued it, and I had great parents who supported me. And uh, I've often used this, have used this quote, I've never really had a job, I've always made music. And that's always come through uh, playing the saxophone, and uh, my discography speaks for itself, and the years that I've been uh, doing this, and the, the world tours and the records, have brought a lot of smiles to a lot of people's uh, faces. So I'm pretty happy and proud about that. And who do you admire? What other players? Because like you said, you've been playing for as long as you can you know, mm -hmm. remember even talking, possibly. Um, when you listen to music, what type of genre do you personally like? I listen to all types of music. And, and I'm not sure when this is going to be aired, but I have to give uh, who do I listen to and like is David Bowie. OK. Oh, and God on, this, on this very uh, blessed day that uh, he's passed and, and with the uh, with due respect to him and what he's done for the music industry. There are very few artists like Billy, like David Bowie, like Springsteen, who have been doing it for 40 years. You know, the Beatles, longer than that. And I, and I have to give total respect for that because to do anything that long takes a lot of, a lot of time. Uh, it takes a lot of time to pursue, to stay successful, to stay in the public eye, to reinvent yourself, to, to be able to turn other generations on to your music and I think David Bowie was that type of person as well as Billy has been that type of person. Do you ever sleep with your sax? Um, pretty close. Okay. Um, uh, it travels with me um, uh, on a plane. It never goes below. It always has a, either a seat or a space up on top. Um, in a hotel room it does sleep in the room with me uh, in a chair. So the, the, the saxophone that you have heard on all the records is the one that I'll play tonight. You know. It's beautiful. Um, and how about uh, practicing? I mean, when you play, do you still, like, do you move I your practice. fingers? How do you keep your fingers nimble so that you can keep it rolling? Uh, um, being, being a saxophone player, there's a lot of things that, that, are, um, uh, that add up to playing the saxophone. One is the embouchure, which is this part. Then there's the, the fingers and the dexterity and the solar plexus. So there's a lot of physical things. And like a ball player, you just can't sit on a bench and, and wait to be called to get up and, and bat. You've got to be ready. So I practice all the time. I practiced last night. You know, I have a gig tonight. I'll practice tomorrow. So it's, it's, being, it's being, you know, ready to perform that instrument. It's not just easy just to pick it up and play. And just like a ball player, you know, there's certain statistics, right? So at what point in your career did you realize that your stats were adding up? That you weren't just like the kid that was four that played sax and you were kind of good at it, but that you were like a different type of sax player? They, they, all, they all added up to this point in having this interview today. Um, you know, when I first got my first gig and then I had two that month, it was a big deal to have two gigs and someone actually paid me. I probably was 13 years old to the point where, you know, when I joined Billy Joel, and all of a sudden, we're traveling around the world and playing with the Beach Boys and, and artists like that all of a sudden. So when did it happen? Um, it's happening right now. And it's going to happen again. And here's the greatest plug in the world. Yes. On January 23rd at The Space, when we're playing together as the original Billy Joel band is getting back together. And it's probably one of the most important gigs I've done in my career because I've had a moment in my life where I had a couple of bumps in the road physically and, and, and health-wise, and I'm feeling 100%, and I'm getting back together with Liberty DeVito and Russell Jabbers and a tremendous band, and we're going to play this music again. Lords of 52nd Street. That's right. So beautiful. You know, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, which is where the, um, you know, the Checker Dome and the arena and... I played uh, the Checker Dome. Yes, you did, and, and I was there, so I wanted... Oh, I remember, you were clapping. I was, that was me. Right, you were I was clapping. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, I totally you know, I was like rocking out to your sax, you know. But um, I have had the good fortune to interview Liberty DeVito, which has been wonderful. I've wanted to meet you for so long, and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, you did mention that you had some health issues. Uh, so you were supposed, you were going to go on tour with this group last year, yeah. right? But you overcame cancer. Yep. Um, and so what do you attribute that success? Was it your attitude, your mental attitude of not quitting? Like, had, what made you decide to pick up your sacks and just keep playing? Uh uh, emotional, uh, a very emotional answer to that. It, w it was, there is, there is God, there is a higher power, and, and there's my wife. And both of them said, you're not going to die. <laughs> so you decided not so to. So <laughs> I decided that I wasn't going to, and my family. 
and I had full support from them. <clears throat> and it starts when you're, when you're diagnosed with, uh, with uh, a disease as cancer. And when you hear the cancer word, you figure you're Lights done. out, right. You're done. done. And 25 years ago, what I got was lymphoma. And 25 years ago, that would have probably been a death sentence. But through um, the medical technology and the advancement of what they can do with, uh, with medicines and, and therapy, I, I beat this disease. So I'm cancer free, not in remission, but totally cured. And how did I get through it? Music was a big part of it. Okay. Music was a big part of it because I wanted to play again because I know nothing else but music and I know nothing else but playing the saxophone. And um, at LIJ where I, where I stayed, the, the nurses, the doctors were absolutely fantastic. And I did from breath to breath. And I, in my very dogmatic attitude, did not want to die from this disease. We're all going to die someday. Yeah. We're all going to die. That's inevitable. But I didn't want to die from this disease. I really, really didn't. And I know a lot of people say it, but I did the walk. I, I didn't want to die. So I paid attention. My wife made me breathe every day. I was there for six months. And I'm here having this interview today. And on the 23rd, we're going to make this music again. And we're also playing in a city on the, uh, the 20th of February at the Cutting Room. Yeah. So we're, we got like five or six gigs together, and this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> well, I think there's going to be more than five or six gigs. I yeah. just have this like little feeling, like note by note, note mm -hmm. by note, um, that people aren't going to allow you to only play six gigs. I think right. it's going to be a long time. The, the, we haven't really officially done one. We, we got inducted into the Hall of Fame last year, um, and uh, they asked us to play one song, and I said, well, we'll have time for you to play one song. We ended up playing, I believe, four songs. <laughs> And Ron Delsner got inducted that night, as well as Clive Davis, and they all came to us uh, uh, about this. This has got to be out there. People have got to see this. So, when when Ron Delsner tells you that, you go, "Oh, maybe he's he's seeing something. He might know, he, he might know a little bit, right? right?" So we we've decided to do this, and and it's been the, the reaction has been fantastic. So we're ready to go out there, and you're going to hear this music. We've had a, a rehearsal or two, and it's been absolutely fantastic. You kind of radiate goodness, I you know, so. <laughs> you do like, you know, from all of those years of performing and bringing so much joy to people, um, sharing your gift like you have, uh, not willing to, to go under, you know, um, just honoring the music as you have done and the fans. Uh, it's, it's really so if, wonderful. If you, if you think about it, <clears throat> we're, we're messengers, you know, as you are, you're going to bring smiles to people's faces. You, you know, we've made this music. We've been on over 100 mi million records sold together. There's a reason why we're here. There really is a reason. And I think there was a reason for me to um, be diagnosed what I was diagnosed with so I can say it again with a little bit more strength and to go out there and play it again with a little bit more passion, if that's even possible. Because I, yeah. I, the, first, <laughs> the first time when I was in my 20s and played this music, there was a lot of passion. But now it's even more. And with Liberty and Russell and uh, Dave Clark is our principal uh, Billy Joel piano player, singer, and the rest of the band, Good stuff. I, I, I couldn't be more blessed. Well, I will be there, and I will tell you that at every concert, I already felt like I was on stage performing with you because I would, as everybody does that loves all of the music, uh, you, you sing along. You, you mm -hmm. are part what of the performance. What is your favorite song? Do you have a favorite Billy song? Oh my gosh, songs? they're all. Am wonderful. I putting you on the spot? You are putting me on the spot. <laughs> the interviewer is now the interviewee. Um, my favorite is New York State of Mind. What's okay. yours? Okay. New York State of Mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, New York State of Mind. I knew it was. He's like, he's just, prompting me, but of course I, New York State I of Mind. I knew it was. I will tell you, I grew up in St. Louis, but I do love New York State of mm. Mind. And what I was going to ask you, but you can go ahead and tell me what you were going to say, but um, the phraseology of your music when you're playing the sax, your sax sings, you know? So I wanted to just talk about that, but go ahead. What were you going to say about New York State of Mind? Uh, um, it does sing through the, the, this music with Billy. And I've played on a lot of other records with a lot of other people, but for Billy's music, uh, the, <clears throat> he's very lyrical. He writes great lyrics, he writes great melodies, and he gave me the spot. If you notice in all these big records, there's not a many, there's hardly any guitar solos, they're all saxophone segments. And what I did was, and I learned with Billy, is to continue this great lyrical thing that he was singing to add, you know, I could do Charlie Parker solos and John Coltrane solos and lose a lot of the audience. But I incorporated what Billy was writing into my style of playing and sound into the music, which was a great gap as Liberty played his drums, as Doug played his bass, and, and, and Doug it's, uh, has been uh, gone now almost 20 years. Actually, it is 20 years. But the, when we made those records with Russell and Doug and Liberty, it was the continuation, filling in those spots that Billy needed us to fill in. So for me, lyrically, the saxophone just fit in perfectly. 
I sing your parts too, just there to you let go. you know. I do. You sing the sax. I told Liberty, I I I, I sing his parts too. You know. There was there was one uh, song, uh, still rock and roll, which uh, I think it was a number one record. I'm not sure. Was it? A if one not, record? we're claiming it. So okay. now, right? <laughs> um, um, and before my sax solo, he says to me, he said, Rico, play something that someone's going to remember in 20 years. Now I'm 20 something years old. I'm going, what are you talking about? <laughs> 20 years and 20 minutes and. And I thought about it for a minute, and I said, okay. And I think it was one take that I did it, and that's the solo that's on the record. It's beautiful. You know, so, and I thank Billy for that, and I thank Billy for writing this great music, and I thank him for letting me be part of this great, great time of our lives. And we all, speaking from all of your fans, we thank you oh, for awesome. picking up that sex at the age of four and for all that you've yeah. done for us. So thank you so much, Richie. Thank you, and it's you're doing pleasure. great justice here as well. Thank you so much. All right, we're here, live it up with Richie Kanata. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed this nice visit and please check them out. Thanks for watching.